it's Dan from IntelliGel, and this is Cascadia. Cascadia is a really deep, super flexible semi-modular synthesizer. I can't wait to show you what it sounds like in some example patches, but before we dive into that, I'd like to give you a tour of the features because there's a lot going on here. Starting with these sliders, you'll see that some are gray and some are white. All the gray ones are attenuators or attenuverters, all the white ones are primary controls. There's a lot of jacks on the panel here too. And all the ones with white backgrounds are outputs and the inverse are inputs. And above those, you'll see these little white bubbles with text. And those are labels for the jack normals, which means connections from other parts of the synth are routed here by default. You can break those connections by patching into them. So now let's take a look at some of the sections on here and get to know the synth a bit better. So starting at the top, we have a comprehensive MIDI to CV section. In addition to the standard pitch and velocity and gates and stuff like that. There's also MIDI LFO, MIDI clock, there's buttons for learning, selecting the waveform, tapping the tempo, etc. Below that we have an analog sample and hold circuit. Next we have VCOB and VCOA. These are both precision analog oscillators. VCOB can also act as an LFO with this switch. But VCOA has some extra features like through zero FM with both AC and DC coupling. This FM has a modulation index, which is a VCA connected to it. It also has pulse width modulation. and hard and soft sync. Next to VCOA, we have envelope A and envelope B. Envelope A is an ADSR envelope. It has a unique feature of this added hold control. And this hold functions differently depending on the mode you're in. It can either be in parallel with the triggering of the envelope. You see a pulse here when that hold is done. Or it can be routed into the gate of the envelope so that a short trigger would sustain a longer hold. And then it can also be added as a additional stage to the ADSR. So we have attack, hold, decay, sustain, release. So let's hear what that sounds like. We have a range switch and then above this is a switch for selecting whether this control jack is dynamically controlling the level or the time. This by default is normal to MIDI velocity. So it's a great way to add some expression to your patches. We can also control this with LFOs and other things. So I'm going to trigger it and then manually control it. And now in time. To the right of envelope A, we have what's called envelope B, but is really a complex function generator. It has three modes of operation, envelope, LFO and burst. In each of these modes, there's actually three states of operation. So in envelope mode, the first one is trigger. These three controls for envelope are the rise time, fall time, and the shape, which morphs between exponential and logarithmic. And in the middle is linear. The next mode for envelope is attack, hold, decay mode. And then the third is cycling. And of course you can CV control these. In 
LFO, we have three controls, rate, the phase, and shape, which morphs from saw to a triangle to a ramp. The next mode is the same as the first, but you can sync this to a clock. The third mode for LFO is actually LFV mode, which is a low frequency vacillator. And this is a really interesting random generator. And in this mode, the controls are a little bit different. It's still rate, but this becomes, instead of phase, it is the amount of change. And the third one is the slew of the changes. So let's hear what that sounds like. And then finally we have burst mode. Burst has three controls. The rate of the bursts, how long those bursts decay for, and then the shape, whether it is a descending amount of bursts, a rise and fall, or an ascending. The first mode of burst was triggered. The second is gated, which means that as long as you're holding the gate high, it will stay at its peak state cycling. And as you can imagine, that sounds great for wobbly bass lines. And then lastly, for burst mode, we have cycling burst, which is really interesting because that whole burst pattern gets repeated cyclically. So this whole time I've been pressing this red button, which is the manual push gate. This is normal to the gate inputs of both of the envelopes, but if I patch into it, it'll break that normal and then I can connect that to wherever I want in the synth. Moving up to the top section, we have a level control or gain for the external balanced input. That'll bring audio levels into modular level here. Next, we have a mixer. And the mixer has two inputs. The first one is ring mod. Second is VCOA sign. But with these jacks, you can patch something else in and break the normal. Square, saw, and then sub. And sub has three different modes. Next to that, we have noise. White, pink, and then alt. Alt noise has four different modes of operation. If you press and hold, this red button, you can select one of the four modes with these white buttons on the side. So let's hear how they sound. For each of these modes, while I'm selecting it, I can actually cycle through three different flavors of it. You can hear the differences. This one is great for symbol synthesis. The mixer also has a soft clipping circuit. So if I sum beyond a certain threshold, I'm going to be getting some added asymmetric distortion. This is here on a sine wave, the difference. So that's a pure sine and that's with some harmonics. And if I back this down, you're lower than that threshold. Next, we have the VCF, which is a four pole multi-mode filter. On the left side, we have the attenuators and attenuverters for the frequency cutoff. And then we have one slider for the 
resonance modulation. On the right side, we have the primary controls for the frequency and the, the resonance. We have a rotary switch to select the filter modes. So let's hear what they sound like. That's a one pole filter. Two pole low pass. Four pole low pass. Two pole band pass. Four pole band pass. High pass. Notch mode. And then phaser mode. Beside the filter, we have the parallel wave folder. Next to that, we have VCAA. This is the primary VCA, and it is normal to the output of the filter, but there's also this other slider and jack for an auxiliary input. So you can use this as a two input mixer. The VCA has a tenuverter for the CV, which means that in addition to normal amplification duties, you can also do ducking. Up here, we have the effects send return section. This can be useful for interfacing to guitar pedals and it has specific impedance matching to work with them. You can also do line level two. Here I have it connected to a, a Boss distortion pedal and I'm using the dry wet blend here. So right now it's dry. What's nice about this architecture is that I can insert this effect anywhere in the signal chain. So that was after the VCA. Now I'm going to put it before the filter. And I can also put it after the filter before the VCA. Being pre-VCA means that it can gate all the noise that might be coming from an especially noisy pedal, like a lot of distortions are the VCA closes. So the main output section is first routed through this drive stage, which is either clean drive or I can turn on asymmetric clipping. So let's hear how that sounds on a sine wave. Normal boost, now with clipping. You can hear the added harmonics. And I can further add to it here. And on the filter stage, I can overdrive that too. This output and all these signals on the top here are your rack level, but the jacks at the back allow you to interface to the pro audio world. So this final output line out is a balanced audio out. There's headphones here, and this is next to the balanced line in that we talked about earlier. In the middle here, we have a whole bunch of useful utilities. Starting at the left, we have a slew and envelope follower. <laughs> It has a few options, like the direction of the slew, whether it's up only, down only, or both. Additionally, you can select whether it's exponential or linear. The envelope follower mode allows you to take external modulators like voice, guitar, drums, and turn that into an envelope shape that you can use to control something else on the synth. Here we have the Mixiverter. The Mixiverter is a really versatile and useful function. It sums two signals. It has by default a five volts normaled in, which means that with nothing passed, you can use this as a voltage source. It can be bipolar or unipolar. 
and it has a doubling circuit so that you can double the gain. So I can use this for mixing, attenuating, I can sum things together, I can offset signals, a bunch of stuff, and then the output is buff mult. Here we have the triple LFO. These are three unsynced analog LFOs that are basically the same speed, but because they're free running, you get this organic relationship between them. LFO two and three, or they're called Y and Z, have these divider switches so that I can further slow them down so that they're even more disconnected from the other ones. And there's a single rate control jack for all of them and a rate control knob. Next, we have three buff molts that are cascaded together with normals, a unity summing inverter, and this level shifts and attenuates. And the purpose of this is to take a bipolar signal like the LFO and shift it into a unipolar only region. Here we have a connection to the expression pedal interface. What this does is take CV and uses it to control a digital potentiometer that is connected to the expression pedal jack. That mimics an analog expression pedal and you can connect this to a guitar pedal. So here you can see this LFO is modulating and you can see this LED. And this is connected to the delay time on the Strymon timeline. You can see that these values are changing in correspondence with the LFO. So. So lots of creative possibilities for taking the complex modulation for, from Cascadia and applying that to guitar pedal parameters. This is an analog ring mod that is normal to the sine waves of the two primary oscillators. You can hear it in the mixer here. But you can also patch other waveforms in. And finally here is VCAB, which is a combination of a voltage controlled amplifier and a four pole diode ladder low pass filter, but it has a single control for both of them. So using this control, I can just use the VCA portion, but the switch will fix the VCA open. And then I can use this as just a low pass filter. With the switch up, I'm using it as an amp and a filter, which is similar to a low pass gate found on a Buchla system. We've only just scratched the surface of the possibilities with Cascadia. There's so many things that you can do with this, so much to explore, that we are really excited to continue showing you some of our best examples, but even more so, we want to hear what you do with your Cascadia.